Welcome to Theo Trade. This is Don Kaufman. July 13th, 2017. We've got about 20 minutes to go to the cash close in what can only be described as an incredibly boring trading session. Ah, I know what you're thinking. It's been the entire week though. So it's a slow trading session and I want to give you a little bit of a feel of not only what we've seen, but uh, what we can expect, of course, into the end of the week. First, I want to start in the SPX. And I'm specific to the SPX because I talk a tremendous amount about expected moves. So right down here is ultimately where the week began. And where are we trading right now? Well, at the upper end, of course, of the expected move. We moved up ultimately 23 points on the week. Again, the S&Ps have added another five today. But what I want to show you here is that we are literally, this is that line zoomed in. So I'm on a, a one-day, one-minute chart. And you can see we're bouncing right along the upper edge of the expected move. And that's kind of what we anticipate the expected move to do is, for the most part, you have a lot of trade that wants to keep markets okay, under this upper leg of the expected move. Now, if that sounds kind of crazy, imagine that lots of trading firms went out and they've sold premium. They've gone out there and they, you know, they sell puts and they go out there and they sell calls, okay? And they're defending these short straddles and strangles by buying and selling S&P futures. And when you come to the edge of the expected move over here, I mean, come on, they gotta defend that like it's grim death over there uh, because it is, as we start to crack outside of the expected move, okay, these firms can lose a tremendous amount of capital. So what do they do? They will defend their positions over there. Now, there is one word of caution on these expected moves, and that's this. Right up again to the upper edge of the expected move. There's always the chance of a wild, what we term three sigma move, when you're right on the cusp of the expected move. And if you look back at any of the recent weeks and going all the way back here to March, okay, we'll crack outside of the expected move for a brief and fleeting moment, okay? But in most cases, we are back inside of the expected move by the end of the week. In fact, if you look very specifically, you can see areas that I've highlighted. These are the only times that we've actually cracked outside of the expected move by ultimately the end of the week. You can see one right up here, okay? And again, these are brief, very, very subtle. However, any crack outside of the expected move at the end of the week has only been by a very, very marginal point. And that's, you know, about four or five S&P points outside of the expected move is the largest thing that we've seen recently, which is it's almost just a margin of error, if you will. The largest crack outside of the expected move was to the downside. It was the week actually of March 21st, and it's March 21st we had the uh, the large sell-off specifically, but that Friday we actually cracked to the downside by about 10 points, which is still relatively tight. So what do I expect? I expect us on Friday to come back inside the expected move, and I'll tell you why. Uh, Friday is going to bring earnings from the banks. So we're going to see the first glimpse of earnings for the banks. And this is really like if you, you know, well, what's going to drive trade over the next 24 hours? It's the banks. It's the financials. The financials, I wouldn't say the implied volatility is jacked up, but the implied volatility and the options that have one day remaining to expiration, we're actually displaying as much as a 30 cent move. Uh, and again, you're going to get some of the initial banks out there and they have big, big market cap all right, what do we have in here? If you take a look at JP Morgan, okay, Citi, uh, Wells, these are the banks that ultimately are, you know, due up in the morning tomorrow. Of course, we're going to see a lot out of the banks. And this is when earnings season kind of kicks into full swing. So where does that really leave us? It leaves us, okay, with the idea that the S&Ps really probably don't have much progression to the upside. And if the S&Ps are gonna to progress to the upside from here, it would be an incredible and explosive move to the upside. That can be hedged, but unfortunately, you're watching this video at night, okay, the hedge that you'd want 
if you think the market's just gonna explode to the upside, the hedge that you would wanna do is something like one of these ratio backspreads in here, where you go out there and sell an option for like 97 cents, for instance, okay, and buy two of these. And this is for a four cent debit. And that just protects you to the upside for the next eight days. And uh, again, this is a trade that, uh, very frankly speaking, I could use. And you can see I just filled that one. You know, why? Because I've got some time left in the market over here. And I'll, you know, I'll go send a couple of these off into battle. Uh, and again, why would I even consider ultimately doing a strategy like this? Uh, because it's providing me, if you will, okay, a degree of protection to the upside. Should we explode to the upside? Again, I'm going to now simulate the trade uh, and take you over to the Analyze tab. So let's come over here and uh, analyze this trade. All right, and bear with me here as I kind of clean the board and uh, and bring you analysis of this trade. So what I have constructed here with this uh, with this back ratio, and it's important to just realize that any time you're put in a similar position to this, I apologize here, or got to pop that trade back in there once again. So we're going to come over here, we're going to create the duplicate order, we're going to take the order, we're going to right click on it, we're going to analyze the trade, and here we go into back ratio land, and there we go. What the back ratio does is it says, all right, if we sell off from here, I don't really lose anything, maybe six cents, but if we explode higher, and, and again, we could do just that when you're on the cusp of the expected move. If we explode higher, I need to hedge myself. I personally have some short positions that will take some pain if we continue to move to the upside. So going out there and using something like this ratio backspread, it's a smart position for those that need that hedge, if you will, to the upside. You can see I'm working another order here. I can fill it at six cents, cannot fill it at five cents. That's fine. Again, this is a trade that can and will continue to hedge me for the next eight days. So again, I like bringing up a position that, hey, if the market explodes higher tomorrow, it is what it is. I've actually got a hedge on. But in any time you're in a situation and you're in a situation where the expected move, we're right on it, okay? And we're starting to breach the upper end of the expected move, that can bring about, okay, most likely, and probability says we're gonna come back into the expected move. However, there is a small but real probability that we can explode through it because all of this hedging activity can get all wound up here, we can explode through it. If we explode through it, my spider trade, okay, with a ratio back spread there, will protect me in the event that we do happen to explode up. And again, to be specific, if you wanna see those strikes once again, I'll leave you with this thought here this evening. I'll create the duplicate order. I'm selling one of the 244.50 calls, buying two of the 245.50 calls for about a five cent debit. Thanks everybody here for joining us at Theo Trade. Have a wonderful evening, bye-bye.